Hi, I'm Miss Kim, and I am here today in place of Elizabeth for the daily Bible study, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. And as you know, Elizabeth does a uh, one year daily Bible study. This is something she's been doing for years and studying and so she brings us along on her journey um, as to what the Lord speaks to her through the reading of his word. And so I have the honor today and Monday of hosting the Bible study. And so I wanted to give you just a little heads up of what we're going to be reading today. We're going to be reading from 1 Kings chapter 14 verse 1 through chapter 15 verse 24. And we're also going to read from Acts 10 verse 1 through 23. And then we're going to read Psalm 133 verse 1 through 3. And the Proverbs for today will be chapter 17 verse 7 through 8. So we're going to take a look at what's happening in the Old Testament and the New Testament and hopefully how it applies to our life in this day and time. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, so as we hear the um, mama feeding the baby birds, um, I am thinking about the task of reading our daily Bible study and then um, asking the Lord to feed us with what he would have for us out of his word. And, and as a reminder, we're in 1 Kings for the Old Testament for today. Um, and so we had the rule of Solomon. Solomon was David's son. So then we had Solomon and then two of Solomon's sons were Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And um, then the, the actual kingdom was even divided. So between those two sons, we had uh, Judah and Israel then became the two kingdoms um, that were a part of all of that. So now in chapter 14, um, it says, Then Abihah, the little son of Jeroboam, became sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray you, and disguise yourself, that you may not be recognized as, as Jeroboam's wife, and go to Shiloh. Behold, Abihah, the prophet, is there, or Abijah, the prophet. Um, no, I'm sorry. Abijah is the son of... Ahijah is the prophet. Um, and that's the prophet that actually told uh, Jeroboam that he would be king. So anyway, so he had told Jeroboam, you're going to be king. He's asking his wife now, go back to this prophet Ahijah. Uh, take 10 loaves, some cakes, a bottle of honey and go to him. And he will tell you what's going to happen to the child. Jeroboam's wife did so. She arose and went 20 miles to Shiloh, came to the house of Ahijah, and he could not see, for his eyes were dim because of his age. I guess they didn't have readers in those days. And the Lord said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to you to ask concerning her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shall you say to her, When she came, she pretended to be another woman. But when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another? For I am charged with heavy news for you. Go tell Jeroboam, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, because I exalted you from among the people and made you a leader over my people Israel and rent the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you, yet you have not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart to do only what was right in my eyes. But you've done evil above all who were before you, for you have made yourself other gods, molten images, to provoke me to anger and have cast me behind your back. Um, and he's saying, then therefore I'll bring evil, cut him off from every male, bond and free in Israel, will be utterly swept away. The house of Jeroboam will be as a man sweeps away dung till it's all gone. Um, anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And any who dies in the field, the birds of the heavens shall eat. For the Lord has spoken it. I mean, that is very um, heavy. 
you know, when you think about, because of course we're reading this and, and obviously it's for different purposes at that time, but we're always wanting to say, Lord, speak to me. What are you trying to say to me through your word today? And in reading this, I mean, I'm telling you, as I started reading, when, um, first of all, when the prophet hears the woman coming in, he says, why do you pretend to be another? For I'm charged with heavy news for you. And, um, and because basically that Jeroboam had not followed in the commands of David, uh, but he's done evil. And you've cast me behind your back. And I, it's, it's a moment for me to think, you know, here comes this woman. I don't know if maybe she thought by hiding herself um, that she was going to get away with him saying something nice to her. And of course, whatever the prophet was going to say from the Lord, it was going to happen. And so perhaps she thought that he would say something different. And I think, Lord, I don't want to be hidden. I don't want to have my mask on when I come to you to seek you. Now we don't seek the prophet. We seek the Lord through his word. And Lord, when I come to your word, I want to remove all my masks. I want to sit at your feet and say, what do you have for me to say? Because I will not cast you behind my back. I mean, how many times have we done that when we take it upon ourselves to live the way that we want? Um, and look what happens as a result when we're not seeking the Lord and not living for the Lord. In the Old Testament, a whole city was at stake. I mean, my, my life, yes, my family is at stake, my son, um, you know, and, and there have been things I've done that have definitely affected my family, choices I've made at times that I think, oh, you know, I shouldn't have done that. But I never have been in the charge of where a whole city is at stake, where people, where the Lord says, it's like when a when the dung is, is on the floor and you're going to sweep it off, it'll be like it never even existed. Um, so, Lord, remind me of that. Never to cast you away and to um, just seek my own plans. Um, you know, there was a constant war in those days between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And um, you go on and read in chapter 15... Um, we go chapter 15 up to verse 24, and um, there is the king Jeroboam, son of Nabal, Nabat, um, Abijam began to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem, and he walked in all the sins of his father, Rehoboam, before him, and his heart was not blameless with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his forefather. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem, setting up his son after him and establishing Jerusalem, because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Um, and so... <laughs> What I'm doing in my life right now will have an effect on the generations of my family to come. So, Lord, for, for my son, for any generations that come after me, I think I want to have the thought of I'm seeking your face so that, that whatever might happen to my family, that you'll count it to them as good that you... that. As, as they're getting the things that they're supposed to do together, um, you know, that, that you'll remember me even in those days when I'm long gone off this earth. Uh, what a beautiful reminder, I think, of my grandmother who's turning 103 this year. And she, her, because of her faithfulness, and even on my dad's side, my grandma and grandpa Spence, their faithfulness to the Lord shows that no matter how I've messed up, that God is faithful now to me because of the legacy that they've left. And so, anyway, just things that, that God has kind of kind of given me light on today. And, um, and we're in Acts 10 in the New Testament. So we'll flip over to Acts 10. And um, 
Acts 10. Now living at Caesarea, there was a man whose name was Cornelius, a centurion captain of what was known as the Italian Regiment, a devout man who venerated God and treated him with reverential obedience, as did all his household. And he gave much alms to the people and prayed continually to God. And um, about the ninth hour, about three o'clock on the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God entering and saying to him, Cornelius, and he, gazing intently at him, became frightened and said, What is it, Lord? And the angel said to him, Your prayers and your generous gifts to the poor have come up as a sacrifice to God and have been remembered by him. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And now send men to Joppa and have them call for and invite here a certain Simon whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. When the angel spoke to him, when the angel spoke, had left, Cornelius called two of his servants and a God-fearing soldier from among his own personal attendants. And having rehearsed everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. And uh, they saw Peter. Um, Peter went up on the roof of the house to pray. And he became hungry, wanted something to eat. And while a meal was being prepared, a trance came over Peter. And he saw the sky opened up and something like a great sheet lowered by the four corners descending to the earth. It contained all kinds of quad, quadrupeds and wild beasts and creeping things of the earth and birds of the air. And a voice came saying, rise up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, no, by no means, Lord, for I've never eaten anything that is common and unhallowed or ceremonial un ceremonially unclean. They had very strict rules about what they could or couldn't eat. And the voice came to him again a second time. What God has cleansed and pronounced clean, do not you defile and profane by regarding and calling it a common and unhallowed or unclean. This occurred three times, and then immediately the sheep was taken up into heaven. Now Peter was still inwardly perplexed and doubted as to what the vision which he had seen could mean. And just then, the messengers that were sent by Cornelius, who had made the inquiry for Simon's house, stopped and stood before the gate. And they called out to inquire. They're trying to find Peter. And while Peter was earnestly revolving the vision in his mind and meditating on it, the Holy Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. Get up and go below and accompany them without any doubt about its legality or discrimination or hesitation for i have sent them so the idea is you know peter as a jew these are gentiles coming to him the two never mixed it was not uh not a it was kind of like the unclean idea like peter would not want anything to do with them normally they would not have anything to do um with peter so the the Gentiles and Jews didn't mix in that day. And here Peter's just had this vision. The Lord has shown him, basically, don't call something unclean that I call clean. The Lord is preparing Peter, in other words, to minister to the Gentiles. And Cornelius' um, house was waiting, and he followed them, and... Um, he had invited his relatives and other friends and as Peter arrived he met him falling down at his feet and made obeisance which is like you know that kind of thing um, and um, paid worshipful reverence to him but Peter raised him up saying get up I myself am also a man and as Peter spoke with him he entered the house and found a large group of people assembled and then basically he goes on to say you know how the law is we don't mix um you know we're, we're not supposed to be together but he says when i was sent for i came without hesitation or objection or misgivings so now i ask for what reason you sent me so lord when you send us may we go to what you've called us to do without hesitation without any reservations may we 
go where you send us and know that you've prepared the way. I mean, how amazing we see at that time, but it happens today that God prepares our steps. He prepares the way ahead of us where the people are even going to already be gathered. So they're going to be waiting for you when you come into a home and the Lord says, go here, and you don't hesitate and you go and you walk in, and they're already prepared to hear exactly what the Lord has to tell them. I just love it. It's so exciting. Okay, so we do have to uh, actually stop at some point. Um, so here are the, the uh, Psalm and the Proverbs for today. Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity, kind of like precious oil poured on the head running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were, Hernan were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. And from Proverbs 17, verse 7 through 8, arrogant lips are unsuited to a fool. How much worse lying lips to a ruler a bribe is a charm to the one who gives it. Wherever he turns, he succeeds. So I just want to uh, encourage you, continue reading through the weekend, and uh, we will back, be back here on Monday. And just uh, thank you to Elizabeth for entrusting me to um, share with you all and giving the platform uh, without hesitation. <laughs> To, uh, to be able to minister today. God bless you.